In previous videos, we have introduced the concept of bra, ket, orthonormal basis set, inner product and outer products, operators, eigenvalue, eigenvectors and matrix diagonalization. In this video, we shall introduce special groups of operators. They are the adjoint, normal, unitary and hermitan operators, which are endowed with unique properties, and find widespread use in many fields of science and engineering. Here, we are interested in matrices or operators where their entries are complex numbers in general. First up is the adjoint operator. Let A be a linear operator on a Hilbert space V. There exists a unique linear operator B, known as the adjoint of A, where one can define an inner product of the ket U and V as follows in equation 1. These operators A and B can be expressed in terms of matrices, allowing us to evaluate the two inner products explicitly. By comparing expressions of these two inner products allow us to see that the adjoint of A, which we denote as B, is simply the transpose conjugate of matrix A, as shown in the green box. Often, we denote the adjoint of a matrix with the superscript dagger. It is also straightforward to prove the following adjoint operation rules in the yellow boxes such as the adjoint of an adjoint recovers the original matrix. The adjoint of the product of C and D matrix yields D adjoint multiply by C adjoint. We can also extend this operator to vector, where the adjoint of a ket yields its bra counterpart. We can also obtain the definition of the adjoint using the property of adjoint operator we just showed. Let's consider the inner product of the ket U with the operator a multiply with the ket V. Per the definition of the inner product, we have the adjoint of the ket U. Multiply with operator A and the ket V. Using the product rule of adjoint allows us to combine the operator A with the ket U. Finally, this recovers the inner product expression. But now with the adjoint of A acting on the ket U instead. This recovers the definition of the adjoint of a matrix. We conclude the definition of the adjoint operator with an explicit example of the adjoint matrix. The adjoint of the matrix A is simply the transpose conjugate of matrix A. Recall that the transpose action swapped the element IJ with the element JI, while the conjugate action swapped the sign of the imaginary part of the elements. In the example below, we see the transpose operation left the position of the diagonal elements unchanged. And we only need to complex conjugate the diagonal elements. The upper and lower off diagonals elements swap due to the transpose operation. And we follow that with complex conjugation. Two commonly used operators in quantum mechanics are the unitary and the Hermitian operators, herein denoted as U and H respectively. An operator whose product with its own adjoint equals to the identity operator is called a unitary operator. By this definition, one can also show that the unitary operator multiplied by its own adjoint will also be equal to the identity operator. One can then show that the adjoint of the unitary operator is the inverse of the unitary operator. The real matrix counterpart of the unitary operator is the orthogonal matrix, Defined in a similar fashion, except the adjoint operation is replaced with just the transpose operation. An operator whose adjoint is itself is known as a Hermitian operator, or self-adjoint operator. The real matrix analog of the Hermitian operator is the symmetric operator. In mathematics, a unitary transformation is a transformation that preserves the inner product. In other words, the inner product of two vectors before the transformation is equal to their inner product after the transformation. Hence, unitary transformation finds widespread application in quantum mechanics, as it preserves the normalization of the quantum state vectors. Consider U and V kets from the vector space V. The inner product between the U and V kets is given by its bracket as shown in equation 1. If these kets are operated by the unitary operator U, 
one can show that it has no effect on the inner product as shown in equation 2. We said that the KETS has been unitarily transformed. Now, let's consider an operator A which maps the vector space V onto itself. Recall that an operator can be expressed in terms of a sum of outer products using the orthonormal basis set U sub J KETS. A unitary transformation of the basis set U KETS and BRAS by the operator U would then subsequently yield a transformation of the operator A as given by U dagger A U as shown in the green box. We said that the matrix A is unitarily transformed by the unitary operator U. Now we know how to unitarily transform an operator. We are ready to introduce the normal operator, herein denoted as N. An important result in linear algebra is the spectral theorem, which states that a group of operators, known as the normal operator, N, can be unitarily transformed to a diagonal matrix D as follows, shown in equation 1. Hence, all normal matrices are diagonalizable. But not all diagonalizable matrices are normal. Diagonalization of a matrix into its diagonal form is very useful in many applications, allowing for more simpler computations. Due to the diagonalization property, a normal matrix satisfy the relation n dagger multiply by n equals n multiply by n dagger. This result is easily shown using the diagonalization and unitary matrix property. In what follows, we shall elaborate on the spectral theorem on two most commonly used normal matrices, the unitary and Hermitian matrix. The spectral theorem for the unitary operator states that for each unitary matrix U, there is another unitary matrix P, which satisfy the so-called spectral theorem in the green box. Here D is a diagonal matrix. The matrix P and D can be constructed from the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of U, obtained by its diagonalization as shown in the yellow box. We have a separate video dedicated to the procedure of matrix diagonalization, which we shall link to at the end of this video. The matrix P is constructed by concatenating the eigenvector KETS, whose vectors are orthonormal basis of the vector space. D is a diagonal matrix, whose diagonal elements are the corresponding eigenvalues of U. It can be shown that these eigenvalues have the form as shown, where theta j is real, so that the modulus of the diagonal elements of D each has modulus of 1. We shall selectively prove some of these properties. It is straightforward to prove that the matrix P is unitary. First, the matrix form for the adjoint of P is constructed by concatenating the bra row vectors. The product of P dagger with P can then be evaluated, where the matrix can be explicitly written in equation 1, with the ij element given by the inner product of the ket i with ket j. Due to the orthonormality of the ket basis set, the matrix would work out to be the identity matrix thus proving that the matrix P is indeed unitary. It is also straightforward to prove that the eigenvalue of a unitary matrix has a modulus 1. Let the eigenvalue be lambda, and the eigenvector be the ket u. We begin with writing the inner product of u ket with itself. One can insert the product u dagger in u, since this is just the identity. By associating the U dagger with the bra and the U matrix with the ket, we can write it in the inner product form as shown. Making use of the diagonalization equation, we can replace the matrix U with its eigenvalue lambda. Hence, we arrive at the result that the modulus of the eigenvalue is 1. This result also demonstrates that unitary operation on a ket preserves its norm and is one of the reason why it is so commonly used in quantum mechanics. The spectral theorem for the Hermitian operator states that there is a unitary matrix P, which satisfy the so-called spectral theorem. 
The matrix P and D can be constructed from the eigenvectors and ANA values of the Hermitian operator H, obtained by its diagonalization. The eigenvectors and eigenvalues of H are denoted by U kets and lambda as shown. The matrix P is constructed by concatenating the eigenvector kets, whose vectors are orthonormal basis of the vector space. D is a diagonal matrix, whose diagonal elements are the corresponding eigenvalues lambda. And an important property of the Hermitian matrix is that these eigenvalues lambda are all real. It is also straightforward to prove that the eigenvalue of a Hermitian matrix is real. We begin by writing the definition of the Hermitian matrix in terms of its inner product on the ket U, which is also an eigenvector of H. By definition, H is the same as its adjoint version in the inner product. We can diagonalize H and replace it with its respective eigenvalue lambda. The lambda, which is just a number, can be pulled out of the inner product using the linear and anti-linear properties. This led us to the result that lambda must be equal to its complex conjugate, which is only possible if and only if lambda is real. The spectral theorem also provides a recipe of decomposing the normal matrix in terms of the bra and ket of the underlying vector space. We begin with the spectral theorem, where the matrix P and D consists of the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the Hermitian matrix H as we have shown two slides ago. Multiplying the equation by the inverse of P. And since P is a unitary matrix, its inverse equals its adjoint. Writing the matrices P and D explicitly in terms of its eigenvectors and eigenvalues. It allows us to arrive at an expression of the H matrix as linear combination of ket bras as shown in the yellow box. Such spectral decomposition of an operator finds widespread usage in quantum mechanics, a topic which we will revisit in future videos. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.